So unit three, as I was telling you, I think yesterday is about inverses and it's a unit that is uh, important and it contains some important information, but it's also content that we sprinkle in throughout the rest of the year. So if you don't um, understand inverses completely, right now that's okay. When we hit it again, uh, we'll, we'll make sure uh, to understand it. Now, we're gonna start with the easy stuff today, obviously with inverses. If we look at these tables for each example, A, B, C, and if we were in class, I probably would have you try this on your own, but for the sake of time, uh, we're just looking at it together. If you look at each ordered pair, so remember we have an ordered pair of X's and Y's. In the first table, we have negative two comma negative one, negative one comma one, zero comma three, one comma five, and two comma seven. And in the second table, we have negative one comma negative two, positive one comma negative one, three comma zero, five comma one, and seven comma two. So these are the ordered pair of the inverses or the inverse. And you can probably tell that, you know, the X of each point becomes the Y in the inverse. So look at these X values. they became the Y values. And the Y values became the X values. So based on the example A, it looks like that our X and Y values just switch. Let's see if that's true for any of these points. If we look at one down here, you know, two and eight, do those switch? Oh, yep, we have eight comma two. Oh, wrong color. Eight comma two. Four comma 44, oh, we have 44 comma four in the other table. So we can conclude that when we're finding the inverse from a table, we take our X and Y values and switch them. So the X and Y values are switched. Now, we're going to expand on X and Y values, because we know that when we talk about domain and range, the X values are the domain and the Y values are the range. So taking combining that with switching the X and Y values, an inverse relation switches the domain and range. So the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse and the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse. And that should make sense if we're switching the X and Y's, you know, X is for domain, Y is for range. So if we switch them, you know, X becomes Y and Y becomes X. So domain and range switch as well. So in this example, we're going to find the table for the inverse relation. And what we're gonna do is we're going to switch our X and Y. So negative three comma two becomes two comma negative three. Negative one comma 12 becomes 12 comma negative one. 0 comma 47 becomes 47 comma 0. 2 comma negative 8 becomes negative 8 comma 2. 
and seven comma negative 32 becomes negative 32 comma seven. And then uh, example 1b, 8 comma 54 becomes 54 comma 8. Negative 4 comma 22 becomes 22 comma negative 4. 1 comma negative 6 becomes negative 6 comma 1. 5 comma 25 becomes 25 comma 5. And negative 6 comma negative 37 becomes negative 37 comma negative six. So if you're given the table of the original function or the inverse table, you just need to switch your X and Y values. That's it. Notice that the signs don't change at all. Anything that was negative still stayed negative. Anything that was positive still stayed positive. We just switch the locations of your X's and Y's. So building off of switching your domain and range, if I know that this is my domain of the original function, that means it's going to be the inverse, the inverse of the, or sorry, it's going to be the range of the inverse. And the range of the original will be the domain of the inverse, exactly how you see it. I, I didn't switch the locations or anything. I didn't write, you know, five common negative infinity because you always write the smaller value first. And then letter B, we don't know what that means yet you know, something written like that. But we, we can, you know, just move that over to the range. Negative pi over two comma pi over two. So no matter what you see in the domain of the original, that is going to be the range of the inverse, no matter what, automatically. And then the range becomes the new domain. For example, number um, you know, three and how graphs are related. And what I think would be a good idea is to take the table that we're given and create a new table like we did up here. Or if we have the original table, we can then uh, find the table for the inverse. So let's do that. So X, and the way we write the inverse, you know, instead of writing the word inverse all the time, we can write this, that negative one, up, uh, up as an exponent. This means inverse of f of x. That minus one up there means the inverse. That's how you can differentiate if I'm talking about f, the original function, or the inverse. So then we're going to switch our X's and Y's. And we'll plot those points. So negative seven comma negative two. Negative four comma negative one. Negative one comma zero. Two comma one. 
and five comma two. So that is the graph of my inverse function. This is the line for my original one, my original function. And that dotted line there, that is the equation y equals x. And we're gonna come back and revisit that in a minute uh, and why that is important for us. So what I want you to do for, for this one is I want you to create a table for the inverse and then plot the inverse. So go ahead, take a minute to, to do that. Create a table for the inverse. You should have gotten that. That should have been the table for your inverse, just switching the x's and y's. And then when you graphed it, zero comma negative two is right there. Negative three comma negative one is right there. Negative four comma zero. Negative three comma positive one. And zero comma two is right there. So if we were to connect those, you know, that parabola is now on its side. That parabola is now on its side when the original one was opened upwards. So now we can talk about what, what that, you know, what's happening with that dotted line. You see that we intersected that dotted line in two spots where all, you know, all three things come to together, you know, the dotted line, the inverse and the original function. That also happened up here. The dotted line, the original function and the inverse all came together. And what that happened or what that means is that we have a reflection. So what do we notice about the graphs of the inverse relation and the original functions in regards to the line y equals x? You know, they all intersect at the same point. And that means the graph of a function's inverse is a reflection over the line y equals x. Now, some of you here had uh, very good geometry teachers, um, you know, myself and my brother. And one of the things we talked about in unit two of geometry was that if you are reflecting, you know, we, we did reflections in, in unit two of geometry. And one of the rules was, oh, if we are reflecting over the line y equals x, you switch the x and y coordinates. Well, that's what we did here with inverses. We switched the x and y coordinates. So it should make sense that, oh, back in geometry, we said if we want to reflect over the line y equals x, we took x and y and we swapped them and plotted our, our, our image. Now that we know that, means we, we are finding the inverse. So we're connecting that from geometry uh, a little bit. And I know geometry was um, a while ago for, for you guys. Then finally, example three, uh, give the function and its inverse relation. Uh, you can make a, uh, sorry, graph the given function and its inverse relation, and you can make a table uh, if you would like. So let's do that. Uh, whoops. So X 
and then f of x. And we'll do negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And we'll just plug those val x values in for x here. Uh, let me get the calculator out. So if I plug in two over three times negative two plus six, I get 4.66. You can make, you can leave it as a fraction if you want, but when I, uh, when I'm plotting points, to me, 4.66 is easier for me to visualize and plot than four and two thirds. So 4.67, then two divided by three times negative one. Oh, I forgot plus six, I'm sorry. Plus six is 5.33. If you plug in zero, I can do that one in my head, you get six. If you plug in positive one, and I'm not saying that this is the only way to do this, Oops. You get 6.67. And if you plug in two, you get 7.33. So then the table of your inverse we're just going to switch those. So 4.67 comma negative 2 5.33 and negative 1 6 and 0 6.67 comma 1 7.33 comma 2. Uh, so I'm going to graph the inverse first since, you know, I'm still using the pink pen. So 4.67 is almost 5 comma negative 2. 5.33 is a little over 5 comma negative 1. We have six comma zero, 6.7 comma one, and 7.3 comma two. Now the original negative two comma 4.67, so negative two, one, two, three, four, and a little bit more. Negative one comma 5.3, zero comma six, one comma 6.7, two comma 7.33. So I know you might you might be thinking, well, they're not going to they're not they're not touching the other ones that we did touch. Well, you can see that you know my, my pink and green lines they're coming closer together, and that they will eventually touch. 
And if you would graph the line Y equals X and continue that line as well, you would see that all three converge at one point. So you know, I know you guys are using uh, maybe not colored pencils. So I'm just gonna label these as well, uh, especially because if I print them out, um, it won't be in color. So I wanna label that just to be, just to be sure. All right now, letter B. I'm going to create a table for the original. And we'll do the same X values. And this one uh, isn't going to really have any decimals. So I think this one is actually a little bit easier to see. So if you plug in negative two, we get zero. If you plug in one, we get negative six. If you plug in zero, you're gonna get negative eight. And since this is a quadratic, you know, and you know it's a quadratic because we have X squared in here, um, we know we have symmetry. So this Y value should also be negative six. And this Y value here should also be uh, zero. And again, you can you can verify that. You see, we got negative six. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to plug in negative one. I want to plug in positive one. You get negative six. So then we can plot that. And then, okay, so let me label that again in case I print this out and it needs to be in color. And then the inverse. We'll switch our X and Y's. So zero comma negative two, negative six comma negative one negative eight comma zero, negative six comma one, and zero comma two. And I'll plot those. And again, if I wanted to graph the line Y equals X, we would see that um, all three lines, the, the inverse, the original, and the line Y equals X, they all would touch at two points.